that is the reason why <coughs> we are reading the greatest <coughs> on the king the greatest mindset because uh, <coughs> it is the mindset which uh, takes us closer closer to success and we can find the elements of success only when we have a positive mindset so forgive my voice but uh, it is a it is something uh, which worth reading and <clears throat> chapter 2 of lewis hobbes uh, uh, the greatest mindset is about the greatest greatness automatically let us see what uh, does he mean by greatness automatically you are whoever you are right but is there an alternative to um, what you perceive as the greatest thing and you to be great you have to attain that but you know all of us are born unique what is our uh, uniqueness and can we maneuver that uh, greatness to achieve great greatness so let us uh, start reading this thing on september 13 2007 lieutenant jason redman a us navy seal was nearing the end of his deployment in the umba province in iraq nearly every night he and his brothers in arms conducted missions engaging in life or death gun fights in what had been the most intense deployment of his fighting career one week more and he would be headed home to his wife and three young children to enjoy fun fun halloween celebration that night intelligence indicated they might have finally located the top leader of al qaeda for the onbar province who surrounded himself with a security team known to do suicide bombing rather than surrender that leader was also responsible for the death of a fellow navy seal as jason geared up for the mission that night he set his body armor side trips aside thinking he would need to move quickly in the coming conflict he didn't want any extra weight holding him back he had something not at him urging him to just put the plates on so he did and without another thought boarded the helicopter for the flight deep into the enemy territory but when they landed and entered the house where the leader was thought to be hiding whoever had been there was gone although they did find weapons and bomb making materials as jason sat on the porch with his team waiting for the explosive to be destroyed word came in that five individuals had just seen spotted running from house about 150 yards away and were hiding in thick vegetation his night number team was tasked with tracking them down to find out what they were as they advanced in the darkness they checked with air surveillance and you were kids no what are these guys doing can't see them as they made their way through the dense brush jason's spidey sense alerted him something was off he chopped it off to stress and pushed forward following what had, they had been trained to do and then it happened the medic on the team found one of the guys they were searching for by literally stepping right on him. the shadowy figure on the ground rolled and reached for the medic who promptly shot him while getting shot himself in the process what none of them knew at the time was that the five men they had been tracking were the last of the al qaeda's leaders suicide security detail of about 50 people and that the enemy had set up an ambush line in that field to make it worse the medic had been thinking of the rear of the seat which meant jason and the rest of the group were already in the middle of, of the hornet's nest as they dragged the medic to a large john 
delete tractor tire lying in the field. Other team members got shot. Out in front, Jason found himself less than 45 feet from two belt fed machine guns firing massive bullets that punched through the air around him with supersonic force with tracer rounds lighting up the area like explosive fireflies. Jason was immediately stitched, riddled with bullets across his body armor. As he fell, he felt like an 800 pound gorilla hit him with a baseball bat as he took two rounds in his right elbow. Then a lightning bolt shot up his arm and slammed him in the back of his head. A quick reach with his left hand found nothing. He presumed his arm had been shot off. Jason kept returning fire and shouting orders to his team to move that caused the enemy to focus both guns on his position. Bullets slammed into his helmet of his gun and shattered his night vision device off his head. Then a single bullet struck just in front of his right ear, traveled through his face and exited the right side of his nose. The force shattered his jaw on the way to the gym, broke all the bones around his right eye, blew off his nose and knocked him out. When Jason came back to consciousness, he tried to make sense of what had happened. My arm is gone. His left hand explored the place where the side of his face used to be. My face is gone. Tracer rounds streaked by, just inches above him. Don't move. Unable to reach his tourniquet to stop the bleeding, he called to his team for help. For the first time, they realized he was still alive. Another round slammed into body armor side plate. He had almost left at place. As, as painful as the impact was, it kept the round from hitting his kidney and demolishing his spine. Somehow, his team leader dragged Jason back to the cover of the tire. They called him close in a strike, and by the time the blur of helicopter transports and medical personnel working frantically to save his life had passed, Jason had lost about 40% of his blood. Shortly after he arrived at Bethesda Naval Hospital in Maryland, Doctors performed their CAT scan and created a 3D model of his skull to figure out possible reconstruction options. The image looked as if someone had hit Jason in the face with an axe. His right, uh, right arm was still attached, but doctors discussed the need to enjoy it. The reality of his situation still hadn't completely kicked in. He had planned to attend his sister's wedding in the Virgin Islands in October of that year. So, at one point, he wrote a note to the nurse asking him, asking how long it was going to take to put him back together so he could go. She gave him an incredulous look and simply said, it's going to take years to put you back together. As he lay there one night with nothing to do but Wrestle with his own thoughts, a voice began speaking. Someone had come into his room and, thinking he was asleep, said how overwhelming the hospital experience was. They droned on about how terrible it must be for all those wounded warriors who were broken and never going to be the same. And Jason realized they were talking about it. When the enemy wins, if anyone had an excuse to stand down at the moment and settle for the life, that was less than great. It was Jason Redman. But as you will see, Jason chose a different, more intentional path. So many great people live lives absent of greatness because they live by default and not by design. They let themselves be limited by fears, anxieties, and pain from the past instead of embracing a limitless, abundant mindset. That doesn't mean 
they never deal with tough stuff. Of course not. It comes to all of us in different ways. But you don't have to run from it when it comes. You can choose to accept the challenges and face the fears and enjoy the journey. When people live in the darkness of fear and uncertainty, they don't have what I call a meaningful mission. An underlying purpose that gives their lives a greater significance. As a result, they don't feel freedom within or peace on their journey. They unknowingly let fear control their life decisions and shape their perception of what their choices might be. As a result, they feel stuck, but they are even trapped, which can cause them to feel lost or resentful and angry at themselves and others. This internal uncertainty can produce tremendous anxiety as their body reacts to those emotions. They may even experience physiological responses or panic attacks. We are seeing this anxiety manifest itself more and more. Anxiety is the most common mental disorder in the US affecting 40 million adults. According to the Cleveland Clinic, every year, up to 30 million Americans experience some sort of panic attack. And it is often people who are in what most would consider to be the prime of their life who face the greatest struggle. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, over 31% of adolescents experience an anxiety disorder followed by 18 to 44 year olds at around 22 percent and 45 to 59 year olds as little over 20 percent. In other words, no one is exempt. This rise in anxiety can be attributed to a number of factors, but the bottom line is a growing sense of uncertainty. And as Dr. Wendy Suzuki told me on my show, Uncertainty is the key driver for a lot of our anxieties. Have you ever felt dissatisfied in your life with your career or business experience, with your intimate relationships, family or friends, or most of all, with yourself? A general sense of blah can become the rule rather than the exception. But as that is why we have been we have seen a significant decline in happiness in U.S. adults in a general social survey over more than 40 years, 1973 to 2016. The trends have been toward toward people saying that they are less happy, especially in the past 20 years. Some turn to coping mechanisms for temporary relief from distress like eating more but exercising less. That may explain why, according to the National Institute of Health, nearly one in three adults are overweight, more than two in five adults have obesity, and about one in 11 adults have severe obesity. All of these behaviors, unfortunately, are self-sabotaging moves that exacerbate the, the problem instead of leading to solutions. And we are here to get to the root cause and find healthy solutions for your growth, abundance and greatness. Some make poor financial decisions in the hopes that spending more in the short term or buying that one magical thing will somehow produce a sense of fulfillment. And when that doesn't have work, they try again and again. This pattern can be especially destructive for someone already living paycheck to paycheck. It digs a debt hole that makes everything else in life more challenging and only multiplies the already overwhelming stress load. We see this trend in the increased debt levels. For example, the median U.S. household income was $79,900 in 2021. According to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, 
urban development that is an increase of almost 35,000 from 2000. However, the typical American household now carries an average debt of $145,000, an increase of over $94,000 during that same time. I'm not saying all debt is bad. But this level of extra debt burden only contributes to the stress load. Instead of helping people feel better, it amplifies the problem. Some turn to business in the hope of feeling better and finding clarity. If only I could do more, they think. Then I will finally feel like I have value and am making a real difference. Yet, it feels like there is never enough time to get done what needs to get done now, let alone to do more. As the minutes stick by, the sense of overwhelm kicks in. They feel that familiar tightness in the chest, the weight of the monster sitting on them, making it difficult to breathe or think. They just feel drained, like butter spread too thin, over toast, adjusted, never cut off on rest, on sleep, on relationships, on working out, on living up to the expectations of friends, family, co-workers and society, drowning in responsibilities and then the physical pain follows, headache and migraines, tightness in the throat, heart, palpitations, stomach sickness, back pain, take your pick, the body sounds the alarm, something is off and the more intense this downward spiral becomes, the more isolated and alone they can begin to feel. No one understands how I feel. Can't talk to anyone about this because everyone else has it all figured out but me. Then of course, if that is true, the stage is set for bitterness to sink in. Why me? Why I am the only one who feels emotionally, financially, relationally, spiritually and every other kind of ally broken and why is everyone and everything out to get me? I don't think it is a coincidence that nearly 20% of all Americans experience mental health issues and that was before the COVID pandemic. Can I be really transparent with you? I just describe all that pain and anxiety in the third person. They feel, they experience, they fear. But I have felt almost all of those things myself at many points. And maybe you have to. I have already shared some of my own struggles and will share even more about them in the pages to come. So, can I just challenge you to reread the description about and change they to you. You feel you experience, you fear, or if you are really serious about pursuing greatness, change it to I. I feel dream, I experience overwhelm, I fear not doing or being enough, I feel the painful consequence of it every day. I am not trying to create more problems for you, but I do want to challenge you to be honest with yourself. Because you can't change your life direction if you don't know where you are right now. You can't have any hope of reaching a new destination unless you get real about your current situation and location. If you want to scale the high, highest mountain, it helps to know if you are already halfway to the summit or stuck in the mud in the lowest valley or a thousand miles from nowhere. If any of those descriptions sounds familiar to you, you are not alone. Anything but. You are normal. That is not to trivialize the intensity of the challenges or the reality that some people face more painful past, higher barriers and deeper vices than others. But as I have interviewed so many experts from around the world, 
studied the insights of countless others and engaged people just trying to live better lives, I have learned that the struggle for greatness is part of what makes us human. To struggle is to live. This doesn't mean, however, that you have to suffer. It matters how we respond to the struggle because each of us has the potential for something more, greatness. You will have the fears. You will have challenges. The difference is in what you choose to do about it. Other people see signs of the enemy of greatness manifesting itself in unpredictable outbursts of rage. Often these outward manifestations of an internal reality seem to come out of nowhere, triggered by who knows what. It can be easy to dismiss them when they are small, but over time they may increase in, in frequency and intensity. They usually stem from some unresolved trauma or pain in the past. I love the analogy of a juicy orange. Squeeze it and you find out that what is inside of the orange is juice. When you look at a human being and you apply pressure to them, what comes out all depends on what is inside. If you have peace and love and patience inside, then that is what will come out when life happens. If you have anger, resentment, shame and stress inside of you and haven't learned to process that pain, then that is what will come out of you when everything doesn't go according to plan. Some people have learned how to keep it all bottled up inside. They have learned not to verbalize their anger or frustrations. But keeping it all inside only causes them to manifest in other ways. No matter what we do, the pain within will manifest itself somehow. I used to have a lot of fear and anger within me. When I was poked by life in certain ways, it would come out. It wasn't pretty, but the healing journey I have undertaken has moved me to a very different place, a place of peace and contentment. The opposite of not bad, not good. Several years after I had gotten off my sister's couch and stepped out into the world of LinkedIn, I had managed to build a seven-figure digital business. It was making me a lot of money and helping a lot of people. And for a while, that was enough. But I slowly began to realize that if I had to talk one more time about how to maximize your LinkedIn bio, I would do well. I would probably have one of those hours I mentioned earlier. It wasn't the first time I had been passionate about something for a season. For example, I loved playing baseball from the time I was five years old until I just decided it wasn't fit for me anymore when I was 17 in my senior year of high school. I was good at it, one of the best players on the team, but I wasn't the, that one of it and didn't see where it would take me in terms of my life direction and future. So I quit baseball and focused on football, track and basketball. The more the move gave me more time to develop the skills to go to the next level in the college and become a two-time All-American in football and as a decathlete. Like baseball, the business was something I had been really excited about until I wasn't. I wasn't using my inner genius to the max in the business. Even though I wasn't sure what else I could do. It did feel good to have built a successful business and it felt even better to have money in the bank. But when I told some friends that I was thinking about making a change, they were shocked. What are you doing? You already have this business that is making all this money and helping a lot of people. Why would you change anything? I just knew I wasn't in my sweet spot. Something we will explore more of in the next chapter. Like most people, my mission was evolving. I had the sense that what I had set out to do was no longer my focus. It 
was time to make a change. So, with a multi-million dollar business that was growing every year, I told my business partner I wasn't doing it anymore. It had become apparent to me for a while that he and I had different visions for the company. But I had just put my head down and continued killing myself by working until 3 years to keep the business going. Despite the fact that we had a 50-50 split of the company, I was doing 3 to 4 more times the work. I was the sales and marketing guy as well as the content creator while my partner had led backend operations. Then I stopped working, everything slowed down. When I said I wanted to step back, he said he would pick up some of the sales load. He ran a webinar that I had been delivering and produced zero sales. Nothing at all. Same product, same content, no sales. And I knew it was time to change direction. Once again, just being transparent with you, we didn't really have the maturity or the skills to communicate about the situation in a healthy way. I suspect we were both frustrated with each other and spe speaking for myself, young and egocentric. There was a lot of blaming on both sides, so we pretty much just didn't speak for several months. It was only after I began to find my way toward my own meaningful mission and take steps to begin healing my own past that I was able to come back to him with a radically different perspective. When I reached out to my business partner again, I was able to do so with gratitude and peace. He was shocked. What happened to you? I simply told him I was grateful for him and all we had built together. I came from a place of appreciation rather than frustration. The program we had built was still producing significant revenue and I sold my shares to him for seven figures and turned my full focus to getting clear on the next evolution of my, of my meaningful mission. What if you settle? The more Jason Redman thought about the negative voice he had overheard in the hospital, the angrier he got. He ever awoke and wrote a note to his wife with his good hand, letting her know nobody would be allowed to come, come into his room and feel sorry for him. Never again. He asked her to post the following notice with a big sign on his door. Attention to all who enter here. If you are coming into this room with sorrow or feel sorry for my own, go elsewhere. The wounds I received, I got in a job I love, doing it for people I love, supporting the freedom of a country I deeply love. I am incredibly tough and will make a full recovery. What is full? That is the absolute of most physically. My body has the ability to recover. Then I push that about 20% further through sheer mental tenacity. This room you are about to enter is a room of one, optimism and intense rapid regrowth. If you are not prepared for that, go elsewhere from the management. As Jason chose to embrace a positive mindset, he began to slow, began the slow, painful healing process. Meanwhile, the manifesto he had posted on the door went viral. Eventually, President George W. Bush invited him to the White House and First Lady Michelle Obama mentioned the note in two of her own written works. It was also highlighted in a book by Defense Secretary Robert Gates. More importantly, it inspired millions of people facing overwhelming challenge to embrace the same positive mindset. The note was signed by President Bush and now hangs on the halls of wounded warrior women at Bethesda. Inspiring more people as the recovered dead man continues to pursue his own meaningful mission. Here is what he told me. We need to build more resilient people and help them to get this idea 
that sometimes nobody is going to come save you but you. It starts with you. You have to be the one that gets up and starts to drive forward. There is a level of resiliency that comes with choosing to drive forward. In other words, greatness won't happen by accident. No one ever accidentally slipped and fell into it. Dr. Jordan Peterson, a Canadian professor of psychology, even cautions parents not to make their children's lives too easy because doing so can cause them not to be resilient. A lack of challenges in life on actually not their development. And if you choose not to pursue greatness and embrace this positive mindset, what might life look like for you then? It could be a range of outcomes with all of them circling around suffering and sadness or feeling alone or like a victim. On the surface, you may look like you are living a great life. Family, kids, cars, boats, travel, or however you might define outward success, but a truly meaningful life will pass you by. John Glenn, one of the first Americans to go into outer space and orbit Earth, served as a senator for many terms and was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2012 by President Barack Obama. He was also the oldest person to go into space at the age of 77. If there is one thing I have learned in my years on this planet, he said, it is that the happiest and most fulfilled people I have known are those who devoted themselves to something bigger and more profound than merely their own self-interest. You may follow a life path that fits what you think you are supposed to do, but it's not what you were meant to do. Or maybe it was the right path for a season, but now your story has evolved, leaving you stuck in a place that feels of you can choose to stay stuck doing what you think other people want you to do, but you will never fully discover your highest, most significant contributions to the world. Even worse, you may get frustrated by it all and become bitter and angry rather than responding to the challenge like Redman did. The world is full of people who choose to become a villain instead of the hero of their story after encountering challenges. They then begin to hurt other people. None of us sets out to be that person. But it happens from the this. I want something much, much better for you. Something great. And if you are still reading, I assume you do too. So, let us invest a little time together figuring out where you were before you get in intentional about discovering your own meaningful mission. Greatness Performance Assessment Achieving a life of greatness is possible when you focus on three different areas of your life. I like to call them the three players. Business, relationships, wellness. It may be tempting to focus on one or two of them, but it is important to develop all three players. As part of your greatness coaching program, we help people assess how well they are living out, living out each aspect of these three pillars. This simple assessment will help you understand your strengths and weaknesses and show you where you need to improve to achieve greatness. Here is a convenience version of the assessment we use in greatness coaching. Give each statement below a score of 1 to 10. 1, 1 completely I disagree and 10, I strongly agree. To what extent do the following statements accurately describe me right now? So let us start the uh, exercise. So the first thing, let me start writing this. So, uh, if you are listening, can you take a uh, paper 
and pen so that you can also start writing and taking the exercise. Let us take the exercise together. So the first question is you are there business and career. So one is I completely disagree. Ten is I strongly agree. So remember these two things. So whatever in between you write, you uh, you give a rank to that will be your score. So if you disagree, go to, towards less than five or five, and if you are going to agree, then go towards more than five. That is the trick. So here is the first question. I am doing what I love and want to do professionally. So mine is question question number one is six. Oh sorry, my pen is not working. Let me give me another pen. So if you are listening to this, then do take this. So this test is about your your business and career. The first question is, as I said, I am doing what I love and want to do professionally. What is yours, your answer? So I put six. Second question is, I am earning the revenue or income I want based on my ability. I put three. My business or professional efforts make an impact on others in a positive way. I will make six again. I make steady, measurable progress towards achieving my business goals. Of course, I put eight, five. So if you are here, if you are listening, then do please take the test. And the fifth question is, I have an intentional plan to grow professionally and financially for the next three years. Of course, I put it. Now, add your total for one to five to get your business and career total score. So, my score is 639, 615, 8, 23, and 8, 31. So, that has been my total score. Divide the total score by five. So I have divided the total score by 5, which comes to 6.2. And this is my business degree. Okay. Next is relationship. If you are here listening to this podcast, then do please take the test. The next is about relationships. So... First question is, my family and or partner relationships are healthy, fulfilling and where I want them to be. So let me put it at five. I regularly engage in social connection, meet up, happy hour events. So I put it at two. I invest time and energy in relationships with my family, partner, friends and colleagues. Uh, in relationships, I'd say three, four. I practice honest communication even when the topic is uncomfortable or difficult. I'll put it at eight. I have an intentional plan to grow in my relationship for the next three years. So, I'll put it as nine. Now, Seven, ten, eighteen, nine, twenty-seven, and I divide it by five, and that makes it five point four. Is my relationship GP? Then the third is wellness. Take the test, please. If you are here listening to this, so the first question is. I am physically healthy and exercise regularly. So, I am physically healthy, of course, exercise regularly. Should I put six? I make mindful nutrition choices regularly. So, this is, I would say, eight. 
I am a great sleeper and make it a priority. Oh, I I put it four. I frequently practice self care and strategies to optimize my mental health. Yes, of course. I put nine. I have an intentional plan to better my health for the next three years. I put nine. If you are here, then please add up all those scores. Mine is. 14, 4, 18, 27, and 9 is 36 divided by 5, which is 7.2 is my wellness results. Now, all this, let us add this. So, all, all this is 6.2 plus 5.4. Plus 7.2. Adding all those two, 6 to 8, 11, 18, and then divided by 3, with, which comes to 6, 6. It becomes 6.6. So, Six zero six zero two. So it says if you have scored two point zero to four point four four, it is legally. If you have scored four point five to five point nine, then it is accelerating. And if you have scored six point zero to seven point four, then it is winning. So I'll say I'm winning. Let us see if there are other grades as well. Playoff bound is 7.5 to 8.9 and championship level is 9.0 to 10 which means what? I am at winning. <coughs> Playoff bound I am not there in this as yet. So the enemy of greatness. So that is that is chapter 2 and we are done with chapter 2 today. Hope this uh, exercise has helped you and you have found out what is your score and which level you are. And uh, if you find yourself to be lower at, uh, with your score, don't worry because you have started reading this book. And we are going through this exercise. And we will continue uh, with the exercise even tomorrow. So don't be frustrated. We will bounce back. Me and you. All of you who are watching. Thank you for watching.